Hello and welcome to the Game Changer series for Global Entrepreneurship Week, supported by Business Crowd. I'm very pleased today to be interviewing the founder, well, co-founder of Business Crowd, and I'll be interviewing the other co-founder later this week. Um, I'm with Sunil Mark Singh today, who's also created the business Home Native independently from this. So welcome, Sunil. Thanks, Laura. So Sunil, tell us a little bit about your your two businesses. Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I'll give you a bit of background before that. So, um, so I'm 27. Um, I first started my well, my first business was back when I was 20. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually with Jason, who is co-founder of Business Crowd as well. Uh, we created a cloud computing system, mm -hmm. a small business. Um, and it was my real foray into, like, you know, startups and this kind of, like, you know, world of creating change for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I quickly found that um, actually there was not a lot of support. You know, when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea, you know. It's kind of like batting in the dark a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with anything, you know, things are, are learning lessons in life. Um, you quickly learn from your mistakes um, and you, 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 you fall down. But you have to pull yourself up and you have to start again and you have to look at things in a different light. Um, and at the moment, like you say, I, I've got two companies. Um, so the first is obviously Business Crowds. And Business Crowd is focused on looking at key SME issues. Um, it's looking at problems in the market, it's looking at key concepts and trying to really delve into how to solve things for small businesses. Um, so that's really important and that's kind of based off my own experience, you know, about, what, about the lack of support. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of one thing. Uh, Home Native is an e-commerce brand, so it actually sells kitchenware in the US, uh, UK and in Germany. So it's a, a little bit different, um, but it's nice to have that kind of you know, um, spectrum of different things going on uh, keeps things interesting, you know, for one. Yeah. I also think it really informs what you're doing with Business Crowd because Home Native, as you say, it's product-based business. It's products, it's distribution, it's branding, it's everything that goes with, if you like, a business. It's very different to doing something that's service-based and the skill set that you need is very different in some respects. Oh, yeah, they're, they're completely opposite ends, like, of the scale, you know, and uh, and when I come to talk about small business and I give my kind of understanding around the market, um, I do it because I have the understanding of what it's like to run a service-based business, a tech business, but I also understand how to run product-based businesses. And you know, things overlap all the time, but as you say, they are quite they are quite different in terms of you know, with product you're dealing with physical stock, mm -hmm. and with a, a service you're dealing with you know, an, an online product which, you know, you don't have overheads, or you do have overheads, but not in terms of, you know, the stock aspect. You're dealing more with intellectual capital licensing and that side of things when yeah. it's non-physical, yeah. Mm. In that sort of sense, it's, you know, it, it gives me a nice scope and um, it, it's definitely helped, you know, over uh, to have this kind of experience. And, and that's why I want to kind of give back as well. Like, mm. I'm not going to come and say, oh, well, you know, small businesses should do this because not every small business is the same. They have mm -hmm. different problems. They have different concepts that they want to you know, put into their business. And and for me, it's about kind of understanding that, you know. Mm. So in a way, you're almost creating the service that you wished was there um, when you started when you were 20 with, with Business Crowd and making sure um, I know that you're very careful in terms of vetting the quality of the advice that's given um, through that, do you want to talk a little bit why that's so important to you in terms of the quality standard there? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I, I've seen a lot of um, blogging sites, and you know, I've, I've read a lot of advice on the internet. You know, the world is the world is full of advice. You know, you just have to like you go on the internet, type in you know, business advice, and you'll get absolutely uh, like uh, crazy amounts of advice. Like, but you know, it doesn't really give you the depth, uh, the depth, or the kind of the understanding of what's really behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and the business crowd—that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to kind of look at 
you know, uh, you know, say take social media or take funding or take any kind of concept in, in small business and say, well, can we really delve into this? Can we really understand what the processes are behind it? Is this worth my time to go down? Because mm -hmm. small business is, you know, it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. And a lot of small businesses don't have the actual time or the energy to go and put in new processes to their businesses without really like thinking, is this the right thing to do? Yeah. Um, this is exactly what we want to do is we want to say, well, look, we're going to explore this concept. We're going to talk about it. We're going to like, you know, uh, rip it apart and we're going to put it back together and we're going to see if it actually, if the processes of this are actually like, relevant to your business because mm. that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Mm. Um, no? Absolutely. So you were, I mean, obviously quite young when you started. What was it that made you decide to go, um, some people would see it as quite risky opting to go straight into business at 20. I know people who are younger that have done it. I know some people take years to get to that point where they finally feel ready to launch a business. What was it that made you go for it? Um, it's a good question, actually. I think my upbringing, like, um, I, I never really had much as, like, a, a kid, you know, like, single-parent family mm -hmm. or kind of, like, being brought up with just my mum and just seeing that everyone had more um, for me like working and I, I have worked for other people I always thought that I you know not in a like a, a disrespectful kind of way but I always thought that I could add more mm. um, I always thought I could do better and then um, you know create a life that I wanted to create mm. um, so in that sort of sense like that's really driven me to kind of want to start something and meeting Jason at university Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he was in the same mindset, you know, he, he, the guy's been through so much change in his life and stuff and he just wanted to have more in his life and, and you know, life is worth living, right? Mm -hmm. um, and having a business creates a place for change, but it also creates a pl place of change for other people as well. And that's really important because, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's about, you know, <laughs> you get one life, right? Mm. But... I think what at university I saw, you know, taking a business course um, and seeing how many people didn't actually go and start their own businesses. Mm. You know, I, I can count on my one hand out of three hundred people how many people started their own businesses. They all went to work for big companies. Yeah, and you know, that gives you well, that's not that's not a bad thing at all. You know, you get a shed load of experience from that. Mm. But for me. Kind of, you know, I wanted to see if I could do something myself. I wanted to test my limits, and and having Jason there actually, like, you know, I don't know what I would do without him, basically, because he was also of that same mindset. He wanted to create that kind of lifestyle for himself and help other people, and, and through that we kind of came together. And you know, we obviously we started our first business, which is called Filebyte, which is like the cloud computing thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we just kind of went from there, really. Um, it is, it's ups and downs, you know, all the time. Like, it's not just being plain sailing. Mm. But that, that's life. You learn from it, you know. And it's that thing, isn't it, of bit, that intrinsic motivation to do it, to keep getting back up, to keep going. Um, and obviously, I mean, the thing that's come across, obviously, in the time that I've known you and Jason, is that thing of shared values, a really oh. shared and clear common goal and vision, particularly with what you're doing with Business Crowd. And that is what I think gives you guys the fuel to keep keep things going. Oh no, without a shadow of a doubt, like you know, and it, it never was, it never used to be like that, you know. Um, I guess, like you know, back in the day, me and Jason, you have to kind of be on the same wavelength, and you learn things like communication, and you learn mm. how to like, you know, uh, compromise over things. You know, if he comes up with an idea, um, then we will talk about it. If I come up with an idea, we talk about it. You know. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's taken time to build that, you know. It's not just like appeared out of thin air. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned the fact about like falling over and getting back up, and obviously I've said it as well. Like that is so important. Like actually, you know, the biggest thing in life is the way to learn in life is is to fall over. You know, you've got to. You can't try and watch your step and tread on eggshells with things because you're just not going to get anywhere. You have to fall over. You have to get back up. You have to, you know. Put your trousers up and say, right, I'm going to go again. And that's how you push forward. And, you know, sometimes you find yourself pushing forward very slowly, but you're still pushing forward. And over time, you'll realize how, how far you've come. And that's yeah. really important. 
It is, isn't it? It's the old proverb of fall down seven times, stand up eight. <laughs> and what's been um, actually, I'd, I'd like you to share, what's been the biggest thing that's happened to you that at the time you thought, oh my God, that was such a big mistake, but that actually turned out to be something that made you perhaps pivot the business and move things forward more strongly? Because we all so have many. those stories, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, um, the the whole concept of pivoting, you know, uh, we've, me and Jason have jumped into business, you know, we've jumped in with people. Um, and I guess, you know, like, I think, on a whole, it, it's about who you work with, and like me and Jason have kind of put ourselves in positions where you know things haven't worked out with other people, but it's changed. You know, it's changed our mentality. I think you know, um, you know, me and Jason have had our fallings out. You know, as as have everyone. You know, mm -hmm. um, but it's about looking at that, and it's about coming back, and it's about understanding why things weren't going well, and assessing it and you know not being emotional about it not kind of saying well oh yeah this you know this is my view this means it's right it, it's not it's completely about what's best for the business you know? mm -hmm. and as I was saying about you know working with other people I think other people give you such a good insight into yourself yeah um, because they people bring other ideas and people bring other uh, ways of working but if things don't match up then you can't stick in the same position. You have to kind of break out of that, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, I guess with me, that's kind of the biggest kind of change that it made me think that not everyone is suited to running a business, you know? That's like, important to find. I think that is very true. I think there are some people. Yeah, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, there's some people that are suited to running a business and there are other people who are better suited and actually want to be led and directed. And it's understanding where your skills fall in best and it's understanding, having that self-awareness to know when you need to be collaborating with others and when you're the person who needs to lead. And you probably find that in... Um, the partnership that you have with Jason, there's certain projects that you will naturally lead on and there's other things that he will naturally lead on because you know where your strengths lie. Oh, absolutely. Now, it's about defining those roles as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's got to be boundaries with any kind of relationship or any kind mm -hmm. of partnership, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it works in every single aspect of life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I think people overlook that. And I think people think that it's just going to fall on their laps and it's just going to naturally just like fall into place. And it doesn't. It, mm. it completely doesn't. It's a complete falsity, you know. Mm. Um, and in that sense, I, you know, I'm grateful for every time I've messed up or every time I've had, like, you know, everyone has these days where they just, you don't have a clue. Like, mm. you seriously don't know what to do. You sit there and you're racking your brain and you can sit there and rack your brain for like, you know, you could for years and you still wouldn't be anywhere closer you have to actually put things into action mm. you actually have to try things you actually have to push yourself outside your comfort zone mm. and that's so key and that's something with the UK market that mm. I don't think we do enough of what move to action or do you think it's the risk aversity and um, it's that difference for me it's a very clear distinction I suppose between um, I suppose a business person, an entrepreneur, and a salary man. Yeah, like um, I agree, and I would also say um, it's a bit of both. Like, you know, being risk adverse is is one thing. You can kind of, you know, I was very risk adverse as a young, uh, like a kind of um, growing up, mm. and I kind of had to teach myself how to be, you know, how to to manage risk better how to understand it, and it, 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 it stems from like having a scarcity mindset, mm. holding on to things, you know, um, not believing, mm. uh, a lot of it comes from there, like, you know, and I think with the UK in general, small business, um, a lot of businesses, they, they're scared to try things, you know, mm. they're scared to put time into new processes, because they don't know, and 
there's not really the support around them to say, hey, go for it, you know, try it out, or this worked for me, um, and it kind of builds this kind of independence in small business that people say they're collaborating, but they're not collaborating, you know? Mm, mm, yeah, it's kind of protectionist mentality, and I think people can be a little bit fearful at times but actually do you know what just go out there do what you're doing don't focus too much on what other people are doing and have fun with it and I think a lot of people lose the fun in business oh absolutely I totally agree with you uh, if you're not enjoying what you do and you know it said, it's been said millions of times then don't you're get a doing job. it <laughs> it's a cliche right uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's so true, you know, a lot of the cliches ring true anyway, and um, I see people, you know, they, they start a business and it's there to create a life for themselves and for their family and create more time, and they're working longer hours, and they're getting less paid than if they work nine to five. Yeah. it's They get stuck in this scarcity mindset, and as you say, it's fear, it's, it's fear of breaking out because it's fear of the unknown. Mm. Uh, how do you actually break out? How do you how do you get, you need support, you know, people can't do it all by themselves, you know, and um, you, need, you need to sacrifice as well, mm. but, you know, what, uh, you know, coming back to this whole thing about mindset and businesses, it, it stems from the top as well, you know, um, and, you know, you look at, like, top-level institutions, government, and how they actually drive small business, and you can say, well, there's there's a lot of things that can be improved upon, you know. There's um, the, the concept that, uh, you know, money and capital is the lifeblood of a business. If it doesn't have it, it's going to quickly die. And you look at investment in the UK and what what investor is going to invest in a company, a small business, when you have stats like 75% of small businesses fail? Mm. Mm. So no investor is going to look at an option. So what does the government do? It creates, it creates tax relief systems. Mm. And is that is that positive? I don't think so. It's trying to get people to invest when you know, the mentality isn't there. Yeah, yeah. It's almost um, it, it's kind of a disincentive in some ways as well because it takes the hunger sometimes out of a business to actually look critically at what it's doing and be creative. Oh yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Like, you know, creativity is, is such an important facet in business, but. How, you know, you can be creative up to a point and then, like I say, you revert back into this kind of shell where you're scared to do anything else. Mm. Uh, breaking out of that. How, how do you break out of that? How do you stop, you know, you, you can't stop fear. You can't stop feeling scared. It's an emotion. You can't control it. You have to manage it. Yeah. But how do you manage that concept? And the way I believe you manage that concept is... By having a group of people around you, having a support network, you know, people who have done what you've done and they understand the process of going through it. It's kind of having that challenge, isn't it? And having a group of people around you. Um, I, I loosely term it my business buddies, but having those people around you that are going to hold you to account, that are going to hold you to do better, to do more, to do faster, to innovate. And... As I said, almost to have that sense of fun and playfulness with it, that sense of openness with what you're doing. I mean, I know going back from the corporate world, a lot of things and a lot of what I was trained in when it was kind of studying law and things like that was about competition, about protecting trade secrets and things like that. And don't get me wrong, um, but that's what a patent's for at the end of the day. That's what intellectual property is for. And I know businesses um, that are up and coming. In fact, some of the people that we've interviewed for this series that are successful because the approach they take with the innovations that they have is almost similar to the approaches with open source with code about collaboration take something use it use it to enhance the environment that you're in use it to enhance the clients that you're serving oh absolutely uh, that's and that that's basically like like what you say what makes someone successful they take something and they improve upon it mm, mm. but it's that thing of being willing to let go of this i need to control everything and i think that's what most fear comes from is people's um, belief that they need to control the circumstances or environments that they're in 
and let's face it, we can't control that. We can't control the environment that, that we're in necessarily at an individual level politically, the change that's happening at the moment. It's not that change is happening. It's how people respond to change. So what are your tips for people who are in business that maybe think, I am locked in this mindset. I'm not taking big enough um, risks or bold enough leaps. What are the things that you find, the strategies that you've implemented that have worked for you? I think the number one strategy is is the concept of networking, you know, is going out there and meeting people who've already done it. Mm -hmm. Because actually you'll see that challenges in life are so much easier when other people have gone through them and they can share their experiences with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes it's easy to say you should go out and just do it, you know. Um, people get scared. Uh, and it's not, and they put that thing to the bottom of their list, you know. I, I, I've certainly done that in the past. You know, we've all got lists and stuff. You're crossing things off. You get to that thing and you're like, okay, I'll just put it at the bottom, you know. Mm. I just move that. And next month it gets moved to the bottom again. It's, you know, I think going out there and meeting people and being in the presence of people who are successful, who are, you know, in that mindset where they've achieved things that, you know, you've yet to kind of get to that level. But what it does is it, it gives you the understanding that instead of being way up high, the, mm. the, I mean, it's actually not so far, you know, it's it's a small leap rather than a, lot, a big leap, but you've created that big leap in your mind, you know. Mm. Mm. So, and there's also, there's no such thing as just, is there, if something is very real to somebody um, in terms of what they want to create, there's no such thing as it's just, it, it can't be a thing of just do it, but what it can be is break it down and take small steps towards it every day. Yeah, of course, and that's really important, and that comes down with your organization, and, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many things with businesses, you know, I guess a lot of people jump into business thinking, you know, oh, yeah, I've had this experience, I can I can kind of run things by myself, you quickly mm -hmm. understand how many attributes you need, like, to improve upon, you know, it, it tests your limits, mm. but also you've got, like you say, you've got to have fun with it, like, because you've got to want to be put into them challenges, you know? You've got mm -hmm. to you've got to want to you've got to want to be a success for yourself. Like it's not like and you said it before. It's not about comparing yourself to other people. It's about it's a test for yourself. Mm. You know, can you create this thing yourself? You've got a vision. Can you execute it? Yeah, and that might not mean doing it all yourself or alone because it's also there's two things I think is can you learn and can you delegate? Oh yeah. Um, I totally agree with that. Um, the learning aspect is obviously where you're going to find the biggest challenges to yourself emotionally. You know, mm. um, delegation is, is a kind of yeah that that in itself is giving up control as well. You know, you've got to trust mm. people. Mm. For a lot of people, trust is difficult because you think you can do everything yourself, and you don't realize that you're spending all your time doing everything, whereas you can get other people in to do them little bits for you. And it clears up all your time to do things that you should be doing, which is running your business, working on your business, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's exactly what I've just been speaking with the networking group that I've run this morning. And that is, you know, make the list of the things that you're doing in the business and which ones are you the best person to do and which things are other people going to be better at doing it because it's going to advance you further forward. I know one of our interviewees this week is Annabelle Kay who talks about the importance of getting things right without sourcing. And it's absolutely right if you want to grow. Um, I know also Anne Hawkins, who you work with, similar thing. If you want to grow, that's what you need to be able to do. But rather than being fearful, begin to see growth as the ability to create opportunity for other people. No, I absolutely agree. Like, and people you've mentioned, Anne Hawkins, amazing woman. Like, these people, you know, they they inspire me because the way that they look at things. You know, they see it, it is all about the way you look at things. You know, if, if you if you've got this scared mentality, then how can you kind of change that to look at it as an opportunity? Mm. Everyone starts as a beginner somewhere, mm -hmm. but you know, um, this is what needs, in my view, this is what needs to happen with the UK. We need to we need to drive this understanding. You know, everyone needs to kind of come together and say. Um, 
hey, you know, we've got this concept of small business, but there should be support networks. You know, Business Link, what was that mm -hmm. like six, seven years ago? That yeah. was an amazing website. That was an unbelievable resource for businesses, um, but they, they removed it. And that helped me a lot. It helped mm -hmm. me find a lot of the people that I needed in my business or even to talk to people. Yeah. Now we've got social media and, you know, there's so much information on social media. It's kind of too much. It, it, it kind of confuses the whole situation. Uh, mm. Too much information is never good, you know, especially repeated information and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of these things are driven politically and regardless of the politics, you know, business is is one of those things that more and more people, I think, you know, the shift that I see in the UK, more and more people are going to be driven to creating their own employment, creating their own businesses, Um away from working in traditional corporate structures because the corporate structure is all about driving down the margins. It's usually, even though companies take expansionist policies, they're taking the line of let's maintain the revenue but reduce the pay bill. So, you know, business is, it's almost an art, a skill that more and more people are going to have to learn and become adept at playing with. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head. Um, corporate compared to small business, like, it is a completely different world. But you've got, like, amazing understanding of both because you've been you've been in both. Um, obviously, I don't have the, the the kind of the expertise in corporate, but I, I can see, you know, um, it is about driving down margins. Um, small business for me is about people, you know. Mm -hmm. It's about um, understanding people. And, you know, in Home Native, uh, we've got a team of eight people. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I treat them as my team. I don't treat them as people who are below me or this or I've got to give them this. We work as it as a team. Um, yeah. You know, if the business does well, we all do well. That's the key. Because well, you know, everyone driving to a common goal, having a vision, but everyone's got to believe in that, and everyone's got to have the same mentality to drive to that vision. You know, mm -hmm. if people are unhappy. They're not. Gonna not going to work hard, you know, and I don't want people to look at me and say, hey, you're just sitting on your chair doing nothing. No, I, I would rather lead by example. I'd rather get stuck in. I'd rather do the work with them, you know. If they need help, I'm there. Like, if I need help, they're there. That's a team. Mm. That's that's the kind of mentality that I think is important. You know? Yeah. I mean, my, my view is I think there's a lot. I mean, I've worked in corporates, but fortunately within that time, some of it was smaller startup areas than the corporates. And that's what the best did. And that's what the best leaders do is they take the ego out of leadership. And it actually becomes what can each individual in the team contribute. And if we look at that as a model, it's a much more fulfilling way to be living, whether you're running a business or not. If you understand your contribution to a business and your part in the role, in the success, in the profitability of that business, in the impact it's making for clients, you are much more likely to be giving it 110%. Oh, absolutely. Like, uh, you know, you, you, you learn that, you know, people aren't disposable. Mm. Uh, they, are, they are there. They've got lives. They've got families, you know. Mm. They want to do well for themselves. And it's, I think, you know, the art of business is, is, is as well as being selfless. It's, it's understanding that the change that you create is not just going to impact you. It's going to impact other people. And you want to make that positive. Mm. Um, and, and that's certainly the way I found I've got the best results, you know. Um, with Home Native, we've done unbelievably well because we have such a solid team. We, have, we don't have any turnover rates of staff because mm -hmm. we treat them in a way which, you know, they, they're, they're like our family, you know. I, I have such a, like, high regard for these people. I talk to them on a personal basis. Mm. Some people won't agree with that approach. You know, some people will say, well, no, you, should, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. But at the end of the day, it's what works for you. And the approach that I've taken and, you know, it, it's kind of, that's, I've always found that that drove the best results. Mm. And that's why I'm so big on, like, collaboration um, about people working together, but actually working together. Mm -hmm. Not taking this concept of, you know, oh, yeah, you know, send out a, an email to your database and um, we'll see how many sales you get and then I'll get a referral fee. I, I don't really care about that. Like, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get, what, best part of 1%, if that. 
Um, and even if you do get that, it's it's just not worth it's not worth it when you can actually create something and drive something together because two businesses have like similar mindsets or similar visions. You come together and you create something much bigger. Mm -hmm. and that's so important. That is like that is the essence of it. If if you can get that mentality where everyone's kind of working together and not working individually, you'll soon find the mentality of small business in the UK changes dramatically. Mm. The problem is it has to come from the top. Um, you know, we're all celebrating small business, but what about the the risk about small business? What about the times that you you have hard times in small business? How can we make that like more bearable for people? How can we make that more you know where if they are having difficult times, they don't feel like giving up. They feel like, oh, you know what? I've got this great resource, and I'm going to go to that resource. I'm going to talk to people, and it, I'm going to learn something. Mm. And that that's that's just the way I think it should work. Yeah, I think people need that. They need to feel connected, and particularly when you're creating a business, because there are times if you're if you're dealing with something that's a challenge, or you're wanting to take your business in a new direction, a big leap forward. There can be those times where it can be very lonely because sometimes you do need to do that thinking. You need to step away from things, but you do need to come back. You do need to have support. You need to have connection and collaboration because without that, um, as you said, change doesn't happen. Ideas don't spread. Um, small things that I think probably most people agree on are, are good things like looking after employees well, giving them opportunities. Um, don't become movements, the norm becomes accepted. And I think we have to be out there challenging. I mean, my, my hope at the moment is actually with business. I know a lot of people are quite um, fearful in some ways about, you know, the change, the changes in regulations and legislation and protections if, if you're an employee. And my view on that is it would be nice not to have to worry about the regulation because what we've got is the new breed of growing businesses that realize that the right thing to do is the right thing to do and that if you take care of the people, the profit will look after itself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, coming back to people and like kind of employees and, and aspects like that, mm. for a small business, that is hiring your first person is oh, it's, it's daunting, you know. You're putting a lot of risk into someone, um, but as you said earlier, it's about breaking things down. You wouldn't just go and hire someone. You would have a process to that, and it's about mm. understanding the process. Yeah. It's about finding people who fit with similar values, and you know, people, they all have their own thoughts and their own views and what they want. It's about understanding if what they want is suited to your business. Mm -hmm. then you can find some way to work together. It might not be full-time, it might be part-time, it might be like, you know, it might be whatever, but you want people, you want good people around your business. Mm. And you can always think outside the box to, to work together, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's smart. I think that's what successful people do. They, they get people, you know, Richard Branson always says it, like, he was never really good at anything apart from being good with people when he brought the right people into the right roles. Yeah. And that is so, like, you know, that, that for me is uh, inspirational in a way and, and also really smart mm -hmm. because there's a level of truth to it, you know. If I see someone who I think is amazing, then I want to work with that person. I'm like, yeah, like how do we work together? Mm. You know, and you find ways, you know. It doesn't always have to be about money or employing people. It's about using, like you say, your creativity and doing things that are different. Mm. And so for you, how do you, I suppose, with personal practices, obviously, doing things that are different, what are the things that you do to keep the ideas fresh, to keep innovation, to keep that flow of almost new ideas, new people coming into the business? Because you guys are superb at connecting. We, um, <laughs> we put ourselves around, I think. I think it's like... Um without sounding too crass, like, you know, we put ourselves in positions, we go to events, we meet people, we're not scared of, like, going up and talking to, you know, whoever, and or finding out more about what people do, um, and I, like I said earlier, it, business is about people, right, you've got to learn to kind of communicate with people effectively and find out what they want and see if it matches what you want, um, 
uh, you know, with Home Native, we do the exact same thing. We, we find the right people, we connect with them, we go to events, we, we network, you know. Um, someone like, say, Anne Hawkins, um, you know, I, I met her on LinkedIn and she gave me some amazing advice. I was talking about psychology at the time. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, like, you know, can you give me kind of a breakdown of psychology? And like, she just said, she just basically said, it's like jumping down a rabbit hole. And you know what? She was totally right. But it's a never-ending process. Yeah. Um, and I think it's literally just using the means that you've got to kind of go out and reach out to people and, you know, on a, on a kind of friendly basis, say, hey, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, this is what we're doing. And, and you kind of find similar, similarities with that. Mm. And there's, there's no like, rocket science to it, you know? It's mm. just about putting yourself in that position. Mm. Mm -hmm. So last thing then, closing advice for the people that are listening that may be at the beginning of their business journey, maybe some way through, or maybe thinking about it. Bits of advice is, you know, you can obviously tell people, don't be scared, don't be this, don't be that. It's never going to work. The thing is, is to actually look at, like, where your business, where you want to go with it. What is the end vision of your business? You know, three to five years. Like, mm. what do you see yourself? What do you envision, envision it as? Who do you see yourself as? Um, how do you bring the right people in? Like, you start networking, start talking to people. You'll soon find that people add a lot to your business if you start talking to them. Mm -hmm. And that whole aspect of collaboration, you know, that is, for me, the key of not just a uh, successful UK small business market, but actually you having a successful business yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, thank you very much for that. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, as always. Cheers, Laura. Appreciate it.